she'll like pull on the leash a bit, which is not ideal. <laughs> Good morning everybody, welcome or welcome back. I was out on a walk with my dog and the rest of our pack and it was nice and then it was like really cold so Sadie started lifting her paws and we came back. <laughs> While we wait for everybody else to finish their physical activity, we're gonna put on some makeup. Won't you join me? Um, I'm going into the city today to tag along while uh, some grocery shopping and stuff happens. Are we gonna use Fenty Beauty today? I didn't bring a single brush over with me. Ah, I'm just gonna put on makeup and talk to you because I don't really have time <laughs> to do anything else before it's time to think about getting ready to go into the big city for some service dog training. What we're gonna do is go around to a couple of stores, like Costco is a good one. We're gonna go to Costco today, I assume, cause like, that's what people do when they go into the city. They go to Costco and stock up on everything. <laughs> it's a really good training experience to go there because it is a nightmare. Costco is usually crowded and busy and it's huge and overwhelming and we're gonna conquer it today. I'm making all these plans for how the trip's gonna go, but it never goes according to plan. When you're dealing with the public and a puppy, it's always unpredictable. My dog is two years old. That is still very much a puppy. There can be some residual puppy energy that follows them for years and years, and that is okay. It's gonna be a nice little day trip. I am nervous. Like, there's nothing to be nervous about. I'm not the one doing the shopping. I'm just there for the ride. All I have to do is my stuff. All I am responsible for is paying attention to myself and my dog. Easy, right? <laughs> but it's so nerve-wracking. Every time we go out to train, there's a little bit of the like <gasps> inside because it's so unpredictable. It can be hard to navigate a new city. <laughs> it's not much different, but just being in a new place, new smells, new way of doing things, I really think that would be fine. But I think it's gonna be an interesting ride. I'm sure I'll take some, gosh. I'm sure I'll take some vlog footage while we're out and about. Something that we're still working on, I'm really hoping we're working on it. That's all I'm gonna say, <laughs> is uh, pulling when she gets a little bit nervous or excited in public, she'll like pull on the leash a bit, which is not ideal. Like it's nothing serious. When she's not working, it's serious. Um, she is a puller on the leash, like especially when she's nervous. She doesn't pull as much when she's working because like she kind of knows, but she does it a little bit when she like knows where we're going. Like if I tell her, okay, where's the car? Show me the car. She'll pull me towards the car because she's so excited. Like, I know where that is. So we're working on that. As her confidence goes up, she is more well behaved on the leash, I guess, which makes all kinds of sense. We have made some progress, which I'm very proud of. But as you may know, if you were a part of the service dog community, anything less than perfection will get you like, shit listed <laughs> as they say which basically means you're written off as a owner trainer and disabled person and your service dog is labeled as fake and everything because uh people suck i think it's important to talk about the things that our service dogs are still working on learning and acknowledge that they are dogs you know sh they're dogs, but they're not robots. And you know what? Owner trainers are disabled people who are taking on the job of training their own service dog. It can take a long time. It can be a frustrating and complex process, that's for sure. And I think we all need to go a little bit easier on one another because the pressure to be perfect makes an already tough job even harder. And when you're striving so hard for perfection, when all you can see is that perfect with a capital P, it's really hard to focus on what you're actually conceivably capable of accomplishing because you're so fixated on perfect. And that is something that happens a lot with service dog training because the standard of behavior for a service dog is so high. I mean, they need to be under control at all times. They need to maintain their composure at all times and they need to be paying attention to you at all times, at all times. These are things that are the rules. There is always 
I don't want to say an exception to the rule, but everybody has off days. I don't know what today is gonna hold for Sadie and I, but I know that we'll get through it together as a team. If it doesn't happen to be her best day. If she's having an off day, that's fine. Like, the absolute worst case scenario is I sit in the vehicle with her. Oh no. So that's something that I'm trying to hold on to as the hour draws near <laughs> that we will be departing. I'm not worried as much about how she's gonna do today as how I'm gonna do today. <laughs> it's going to be fine. <laughs> but the service dog community makes it so hard to uh, relax, you know? Like I want to put up videos of us doing our training just to like show an honest look at what it looks like, but I'm not ready for that yet because I am not in a place where I think I could emotionally handle a bunch of people jumping down my throat about like how fat my dog is or how like, oh, she's not in a perfect heel. Sadie is never in a perfect heel. One of her tasks is to stay just ahead of me and guide me to follow the people that I'm with. So she's kind of steering me through public sometimes. Like I tell her where to go when I'm in my mind enough, but when I'm completely out of my mind and dissociated. A good example is when we would go to the mall with my former partner, just walk around to do some training. If it got too overwhelming for me and I noped out of my brain, I would just stay with the people I was supposed to be with <laughs> because Sadie takes me. Like she follows them. I tell her when we get in the store, okay, follow. And she follows the people that we're supposed to be with. And if we get separated from them, it's a little complicated. It's harder to train for her to be okay with us being separated from our pack that we've gone out with. I taught her first, like, okay, follow. <laughs> and now, like say we wanted to go to different stores or something, she would still want to follow and be with him because that's her job is to keep me with him. That is something to also work on, but I'm not too concerned about that in, at this point in time because anytime we go out with somebody in public for the foreseeable future, that came out weird. The, anytime we go out in public for the foreseeable future, it's likely going to be with people who we won't be separating from, um, just for training purposes anyway. So, I am not too concerned. Anyway, I also just realized that I want to put on lipstick because it makes me feel like a fancy lady. <laughs> yeah, this video was a random mismatch. Miss mash. <laughs> mishmash of rambling and, uh, I don't know if it made much sense, but I guess the point I'm trying to make is don't judge somebody else by what you can see happening. If you see somebody's service dog misbehaving in a store, don't say anything. Even if you know in your core that that is a fake service dog and it doesn't belong in here, just please don't say anything. There's a very good chance that it's just somebody owner training and their dog is having an off day or maybe they're just starting their training. And if you were to say something, if it's not hurting anyone, if this dog is not lunging at anybody and being aggressive, just let it be. I don't want to know how I would react if somebody came up to me while I was having a tough dog training moment and was like, you know, you shouldn't be in here with that dog. It's for service dogs only. There would be a cleanup on aisle 12, if you know what I mean. Um, I hope you do because I'm not even completely sure what I mean. Thank you for watching. The gist is that you should not forget to be kind to yourself and others today. What? <laughs> Sorry, my... Okay. I thought my ghosts were gonna fall. They made a sound and it scared the crap out of me. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is don't forget to be kind to yourself and others today. And I will see you so soon. Thank you very much for watching. You deserve everything and more. Bye! <laughs>